The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The disciples of John approached Jesus and said, Why do we and the Pharisees fast much, but your disciples do not? Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The day will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one patches an old cloak with a piece of unshrunken cloth, for its fullness pulls away from the cloak, and the tear gets worse. People do not put new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the skins burst, and the wine spills out, and the skins are ruined. Rather, they pour new wine into fresh wineskins, and both are preserved. The Gospel of the Lord. I just bought a wedge pillow for my bed because I don't have an automatic bed that lifts up. And the pillowcase that I bought for it also said it gave the warning, which I haven't followed, uh, to be sure and wash it before use because it will shrink and it will shrink to fit the pillow the, the, the uh, pillow a little better. Of course, that's the sort of thing that Jesus is referring to here. A new piece of cloth, uh, unless it's some kind of petroleum-based, man-made, god-awful substance, uh, which most of us are wearing, uh, you know, will shrink when you wash it. So. Uh, if you use new cloth to repair an old garment, it's going to shrink and rip the seams that you use to repair it. Similarly, the wineskins. It's pretty common knowledge among people who know something about wine that it is impossible to crush grapes and continue to have grape juice unless you do something to prevent the action of the yeast, because yeast actually is on the skins of the grape as it is harvested. And so you crush the grape, you're going to get wine or something fermented, whether it's palatable or not, but you are going to get wine. That's why those who say that Jesus used grape juice at the Last Supper or at the marriage feast of Cana are out of their minds. They simply don't know the, um, the technology behind winemaking. Until Joseph Welch came along, it was impossible to preserve grape juice for any length of time. So new wine would still be fermenting. And so what does fermentation do? It produces gas, carbon dioxide, and of course, in an old, stiff wine skin, it will uh, just burst the skins. A new wine skin will be pliable and flexible and allow for that. Now Jesus used that as a metaphor that I think in some ways does apply to our Blessed Mother, whom we, whom we commemorate today. The entire gist the entire direction of the prophecy of the Old Testament was that God chose his people to be his very own so that they would be sacraments, signs, symbols of God's love for all people. What did his chosen people do? They acted self-centered and said, oh boy, we're the favored ones of God. Isn't that wonderful? God's going to continue to be good to us and, well, too bad about all those other people. 
But that's not what God wants. That God chooses us, calls us as disciples, not for our own self-perfection. God wants us to give us the gift of perfection as he is perfect, so that from the treasury that he gives us, we can give God's love and grace to others. And through that chain of events, bring about, through that chain of giving, bring about the kingdom of God. Now, our Blessed Mother came from a people who were like the old wineskins. They were hardened in their own self-interest and expected God to be the servant of that. Mary, for whatever reason, chose not to be the mother of the Messiah. She chose consciously not to be the mother of the Messiah because every Jewish woman would want to get married and have as many children as possible in hopes that one of them would be the Messiah. Now, my son, the Messiah, uh, no greater honor could be there. Mary chose virginity as her gift to God. And in choosing virginity, she gave up the prospect that everybody else sought for themselves to be the mother of the Messiah. And because in her virginity she chose to be a new vessel, a new wineskin, God was able to fill her with his spirit and bring forth Jesus Christ. Not, as she very clearly says in the Magnificat, not simply for her own benefit, not so that she could lord it over everybody else and says, look at my son, the Messiah. No, so that she could participate in his mission to be the sign and instrument of God's saving love for everybody. And so Mary is truly our model in, uh, in this role because God has called us, called us here, called us to pray, to serve him, not just so that we might get to heaven, but so that we can go forth from here and join everybody else on the road to heaven and help one another to become part of the fullness of God's kingdom.